uh, those of you who are pre presenters, could you please uh, upload your presentations on this uh, computer so we can collect them all and uh, send it out to you afterwards. Thank you. Then we are ready for Norasa's presentation. Uh, 21st century skills and lifelong learning in e-learning environments for educators and learners. So please. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, say thank you to the organizer and to TCU, uh, especially you know uh, everybody who's involved from Korea and also Dr. Jin. Until you know at the airport, uh, really looking forward uh, and make sure that we are in the transportation until we reach. Thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. So uh, I'm very delighted to be here. Together, actually, my team member, myself, uh, Juvi, and Helmi Norman, two from Malaysia and one from the Philippines. So we are very happy to present uh, our research uh, proposal that we have shared. Actually, it started in Copenhagen uh, last year. Uh, we were talking about this, about the skill, about the 21st century skills and lifelong learning in e-learning environment for educator and for learners. So we're going to explore and come up with uh, proposing a framework. Okay. From the United Nations SDG Sustainable Development Goals, of course, everybody is striving for the, especially for educators, quality education for, specifically for the quality education uh, for SDG number four although it can also be transdisciplined with other SDGs. This, the SDG number four for lifelong learning. Uh, according to the Future Jobs Report World Economic Forum 2016, 65% of our children in the schools today will end up working in completely new job types that don't yet exist. So uh, the skill needed, you know, we uh, as educators, lifelong learners, lifelong educa educators should uh, think about it for our next generation. By 2020, according to the World Economic Forum, the 10 skills we need to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution, complex problem solving, critical thinking and creativity will be the top three skills for the future jobs. So. Why? Why we are doing this? To thrive in today's innovation-driven economy. Students that will become future workers in the 21st century workforce market require a different set of skills uh, for learning. And also, why we do this? To emphasize the worrying situation for, with regards to the 21st century skill gap. So to make sure that we are preparing for our next generation with the proper skills so that the workforce is in line with what is needed for the next uh, generation. The scenario, in 2015, there are the top 10 skills uh, that is needed by uh, what is uh, stated by UNESCO 2013 and World Economic Forum 2015. There are 10 top uh, skills needed in 2015, which are complex problem solving and so on, uh, until creativity and they do the research again by 2020. What are needed? What are the skills needed? Complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence. If before this emotional, we don't talk about it. Judgment of decision making, service orientation, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. And if we see from the 2050 and 2020, critical thinking and creativity play a big role. And Refocusing our skills, Econom uh, according to the World Economic Forum, the Future of Job Report 2017, refocusing our skills, top skills by 2020 shift to critical thinking, creativity and emotional intelligence. 
and what we are uh, exploring here is we are taking the two uh, top, which is the critical thinking and the creativity. Also, by the 2022 skill outlook for the future jobs report 2018 by, by World Economic Forum also saying the same thing. The gap now, why we are doing the research? Lack of research with regards to 21st century skills and lifelong learning in e-learning environment for the lifelong learning educators and learners. For us here, limited framework. We don't have the framework for that model 21st century skills for the lifelong learning, for educators and for the learners. So the research will investigate the 21st century skills and lifelong learning in e-learning environment for educators and for learners, and to develop and analyze the developed model. The aims, analyze the 21st century skill for the lifelong learning in e-learning environment, to develop the model and to evaluate the model. There is this question, what are the factors influence the 21st century skills needed for lifelong learning in an e-learning environment for educators and for learners? And can the new model of the 21st century influence for the lifelong learning in the e-learning environment for the educators? So these by uh, quoted from the World Economic Forum, the 21st century skills and the lifelong learning skill, I quoted from uh, Daisy got at, uh, at all 2016 uh, about the ASM community learning. There are six skills uh, for the lifelong learning, participatory communication, participatory learning, supporting democracy, good governance, social learning, and NGO, involve, NGO involvement. And e-learning, I quoted from uh, Garrison at all 2010, cognitive presence, social presence, teaching presence, supporting learning discourse, setting the learning this climate and selecting e-learning content. So the, the thing that is coincide that we are going to see whether it can be the framework for the 21st century e-learning environment. How are we going to do this? There are three phases. Analysis phase, design and development, implementation, and evaluation phase. For the analysis phase, we, are, we, are, we have done our document analysis. For the design and development, the method that we're going to use, we're going to use uh, Fuzzy Delphi with Asia and Europe uh, expertise, experts. And for the implementation, we are going to use the uh, PLS SAM model to verify the model that we, have, um, we are going to propose. Analysis phase, we are done with it. Document analysis, there are many uh, with the help of uh, uh, research assistant and also um, uh, Juvi also together. Uh, document analysis, uh, and the main thing that we have quoted here, the future jobs reported by World Economic Forum 2015, ASM Lifelong Learning Report 2016, Community of Inquiry Paper 2010. And the method, I would like to, uh, to express my appreciation to some of our experts here who are our respondents. Uh, those who are here, uh, Rumiana, uh, Yamada is not here, uh, Terim Lee, uh, Prof. Poloski, thank you for being the experts uh, for our Fuzzy Delphi. Uh, some, of, some of us also, I think, uh, I've sent uh, the invitation, but maybe you all are very busy. It's okay. Uh, but it, the, the, the uh, respondent is enough from the European countries and from the Asian. So we have there uh, all the logos from your institution, from Albog, and from so many there. Yeah? I'm so blessed to be surrounded by uh, very professional, friendly, humble colleagues of ASM. Okay, the method we're going to use, we are going to use fi uh, fuzzy Delphi method, the concept uh, of combining fuzzy set theory and Delphi, uh, proposed by Murray, Pipino, and Gish 1985. Uh, and also, uh, how we're going to do this? Delphi is an expert opinion survey method with three features anonymous response, iteration, and controlled feedback. And finally, the statistical group response. 
So, but of course, there are some uh, weaknesses, but we are going to try to overcome to minimize the weaknesses. Okay, so these are the steps uh, towards uh, the formation of the framework. So, the two round uh, fuzzy delta method process design. The first step, formation of the FDM team to define the problems. We are done. The second, selection of a panel of experts. A uh, suggestion of 10 to 50 of expert in Delphi technique by Jones uh, and Twist, 1978. Uh, yeah, those are the, I don't know, that is, is that you, Jen? Uh, the Poloski 2004 or different Poloski? <laughs> I quoted the work. Uh, <laughs> different Poloski. <laughs> different Poloski. <laughs> different po Okay. So after that, the development of fuzzy Delphi instrument based on the factors, then the transmission of the first FDM uh, instrument to the experts, and analysis of the first round experts respond. So we are done uh, uh, at the fifth steps. So this is the progress that we're going to report. The sixth next, uh, we are going to do the transmission for the second round, and analysis for the second round, consensus, uh, reach, uh, try to, to, to get the consensus among the experts uh, and after that we do the same then preparation for the report for the final so the 12 experts I would like to uh, know this I, we appreciate it very much uh, the experts are very committed very prompt very professional we are from Athabasca University Korea National Open University Sofia University Bulgaria, Bournemouth, uh, Ru West University, Applied Sciences, uh, Arab Open University, Elbok, Brunei, UPM, University of Pansa, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and also from India, from Baroda. This is after we uh, have gone through the, uh, the document analysis. We came up with the instrument. We distrib distrib distributed online via Google Form. And they, after that, they submit. Each of the experts submit. Is, is, uh, because we can see it really reflect their experience in the lifelong learning and the experience in e-learning. They are so efficient, so, so fast, and um, you know, uh, they make my life very easy. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, because despite the busy schedule, I also contacted uh, uh, Juvie late. Because after coming, coming back from Copenhagen, occupied with work, uh, very, very extremely busy. And when Suna asked for a report, I was panicked. And straight away, we came up, you know, strategize so that it can be on time and all that. Yeah, I'm here uh, to, to, to give the report to the progress. And yeah, something very good. It's something, that's the pushing factor. <laughs> Thank you very much. At least, you know, I can prepare a few uh, ISI papers from here because the data is very rich. So these are the instruments. Yeah, and the findings after we run uh, with the fuzzy Delphi, some uh, L uh, factors are accepted, some are rejected. So this is the first round. So we are going to do the second round contact them again and especially what they have rejected whether you know they want to rethink or they want to stay and if they still want to reject we're going to reject the the, the element so we work, we hope yeah to get the framework uh, for the e-learning for the 21st century skills the lifelong learning skill and the e-learning skills and what are the updates now as I mentioned to you earlier we are at the fifth stage and maybe uh, a few more months. Uh, we are at the fifth stage now, very systematically. And uh, after this, going through the six, seven, eight, and nine until we can prepare a paper, book a chapter in books, uh, and so on. So this is really our goal to get the framework. So the framework is not there yet. Looking forward for that. Thank you very much. That's the progress. Thank you very much for a very structured your research project. Thank you very much. Very nice. Yes. Are there any comments, questions? 
Yes. After identifying the what we call the factors or the skill that you need to have, right? Yeah. Perhaps it is much more useful if you can say that which part of the curriculum we need to modify to make sure that this factor come in. Identifying the factor alone may be, I mean, it's quite a good research, right? But you need to identify some of the factors perhaps by identifying, by modifying the curriculum, we can implement those factors. Not all the factors, perhaps two or three factors. Because we must say that all these factors is your gut feeling, what's going to be like, right? Perhaps your gut feeling, how you should modify your curriculum to include, to make some of these factors realizable, then your study will be a truly complete one. Because as an academician, uh, I look at your study, you only identify the factors, but you don't tell me how should I modify the curriculum to make sure that some of these factors are in it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. We are actually in the process. We are not done yet. We are not done. We are only at the fifth and that is very micro that uh, Professor is suggesting. It's a very good idea. And we are, my aim is to come up with the framework. And the factors all are based on literature review, literature review and based on experts. So uh, we, are going, we can do that, uh, going deeper into that for the future research. Thank you for the suggestion. I just wonder these concepts you are working with, um, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, they are very difficult concepts to work with in mm. a, a learning and education yeah. framework. So, mm. so how do you, do you sort of investigate uh, defini definitions of yeah. the concepts or how do you understand them because they are very... Subjective. Yeah, they are very difficult actually yes. to, to work yes. with. Yeah. Those elements are very subjective, no doubt about it, mm. but there are some instruments mm. uh, can be used mm. uh, to measure those. Mm. Uh, the instrument of creativity, mm. problem solving mm. and others, mm. critical thinking and mm. so on. Mm. So for further detail, for more, mi more micro work, mm. we're going to use uh, the items, mm. uh, the instrument. Mm. So maybe for our next presentation, we're going to share some mm. of those. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, more questions? No? Okay, thank you to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juvi. Thank you for all the experts again. And Lars, you're the next presenter of uh, regarding 21st century skills and instructional designs is the title of the research project we're working in. The initial title of the group work, yes. Thank you so much for, uh, for the last presentation, for, for uh, attending, uh, for focusing our attention on, on 21st century skills uh, that have been kind of the, 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 the focus for, for, the, for the general work. Uh, and thank you for all the presentations that show us how, how, how many places and how many uh, aspects we're working with in, the, in this group. It's inspiring to, to listen. In our group, we have also take departure we have taken departure in the in the uh, area of 21st century skills, and especially what you what you also uh, suggested about that so many people will be working with skills that, with jobs that are not known yet, uh, and the creativity, the problem solving skills are, are so important. So in our in our group, uh, which consists of uh, me, Bull, uh, me, and uh, Professor Push uh, Karanam who uh, was not able to be here today, but will join us tomorrow, uh, uh, both for our TCU 
uh, expert forum and for in our group to to uh, go on uh, with our work. We have uh, we have focused our uh, our group's work on on focusing on the learning spaces in the digital era, especially um, the role of informal learning uh, as all the new jobs that are going to be uh, created, all the new tasks for people to work with. Um, it's maybe not only in the formal curriculum, but it's also created through all the students' uh, work, their informal activities, and how do we see the relation between the formal and the informal uh, learning practices. So that's what we are going to, to, uh, to focus on. Looking at learning spaces, uh, there's very many other places than just in the classrooms. As I said, there can be informal settings for informal settings. They can be in classrooms and laboratories, student workspaces. Um, it could be in school, it could be out of school, uh, located in work uh, settings, in libraries, many other informal learning spaces, which all have the, uh, the influence on what will happen for, uh, for the students. Uh, the definition of informal learning, non-formal learning, and formal learning um, can be approached fr from many different approaches. And we have in, in our short presentation focused on informal learning as what happens outside of the classroom. But that is only one way of looking at it. That will say that uh, uh, actually a big part of ordinary university uh, courses will then actually be informal learning because a university uh, program happens many other places than, than in the classroom. Group work, uh, student driven uh, 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 explorations will, all, uh, always, uh, will, will all be part of, of what would then be called informal learning. So we need to, to go into the, the, the concept of, of what is actually to be labeled as informal learning. Another thing to, to go into is the combination of uh, the physical context and the virtual context. Uh, because uh, a lot of the uh, activities are not just totally uh, going on online, but is going on in a combination of places. When, student, when groups of students meet to work, they can maybe be sitting together in, 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 a, in a group, but they will also have different kind of online access, maybe to some collaborative uh, documents that they are all working on at the same time, making uh, maybe each uh, their own places. But this combination of the virtual and the physical spaces is what we're going to, to explore. Um, as I said, we're going to explore because uh, our group, we have not yet reached a final uh, or reached a, a, a final results, or, uh, but we are planning for going in this direction in, in the group of Karana, me, me and I. What is also interesting is how technology redefines uh, what is a learning space, what is a place, uh, and, and how to understand time. Uh, and where working online can be formal as well as informal. The learning management system uh, presented by the university with a lot of resources, a kind of formal online learning space, whereas all the, the different social media, the different collaborative workspaces can be seen as informal online um, spaces. Um, some of the uh, some of the uh, literature on, on the set um, on, on the topic focuses on on the student involvement as important for student engagement and for informal learning. Uh, focusing on on campus environments that is not only consisting of, of the classrooms with with, uh, with uh, fixed activities, but to have opportunities for diverse ways of uh, working together and exploring uh, things. So this research project we're going to do will will um, will examine how the changing uh, contexts are for learning spaces in higher education. Looking at specific places in India, looking at specific places in Europe, uh, how these changes are affecting the learning practices and, and the students' uh, learning outcome. We will look at the, the physical and virtual spaces available for students, how they are developing. At Olbo University, where, where me and I come from, uh, half of, of all programs are, are 
consisting of, of, of courses that are planned and led by the teachers, but half of all programs uh, consisting of student group work, student projects where they set their own goals and work with projects combining what is obtained, uh, knowledge obtained from the courses, um, uh, and then looking at real life problems in order to kind of uh, try themselves out in complex problem solving. And how do they use the physical spaces, the virtual spaces, the uh, combination of universities, uh, companies, and, and, and other resources? Uh, and in a development project at Aalborg University uh, right now, regarding the problem-based learning and the uh, problem-solving skills, we're looking at how the, the relation is between uh, the planned courses and uh, the students own the student-led work. Uh, we're talking about not, there is the concept of flipped classroom where you can flip the, the teaching method in a specific class, but we're talking here about, can we talk about a flipped curriculum where curriculum is not totally planned from the start, but is uh, chosen and combined by the students through their work at, um, depending on what is uh, important for the students to, to, to form their, their, their education. So these are our preliminary plans for the research group of Karana, and I. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, you have not mentioned about mobile devices or whatever, right? Because at the moment, right, one of the hot things, the people uh, use mobile. So perhaps you might want to incorporate the one in your virtual spaces or whatever you do that. Because uh, nowadays people want convenient, they want fast. Either videos, or assessment or whatever, right? I don't want to open my desktop, it's a waste of my time. I my handphone. Anywhere I go, I can access. I can use the thing. Perhaps you might want to explore the one, right? The mobile devices. Yeah, you're very right that when we talk about digital learning or virtual spaces, we don't mean uh, focused on a computer or, or, or focused on, on because a lot of the students uh, access all these virtual spaces through mobile uh, accessories that can be phones, that can be tablets. And, and they, they use them in, in many different spaces. That's why a bus can be a learning space if you are listening to, to something um, or, or doing your work. Uh, a train trip can be a learning space, uh, depending on the mobile. But that, that's, of course, a, an important thing to ha uh, have in mind. I also actually... Uh finishing uh, one of research about the learning spaces. I call my research Hill just to share higher education active learning spaces mm -hmm. with the uh, um, Nation Research University Network and the Australian um, Innovative Research University Network. And maybe you can also use the framework. They have uh, the model, PST model, pedagogy space technology model. Uh, just a suggestion to add you. colors to your research. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank that you. Sounds interesting and a nice acronym. BST model, Heels. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Heels project. Heels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we'll say thank you to you last. <laughs> and then we have a final presentation from you, Jatib, a brief. Status on your project, yes?
I will just go very brief. We are, we are all together, Rita over there, and Ines is not here. Actually, the one who lead the project is Ines. And what we are aiming to is try to open a classroom between Asian country and uh, European country by achieving the creative problem solving. That is the target of our research. Um, so I just, on behalf of the two, I just try to go as much as I can and very brief as much as I can. When we define a creative problem solving as a lot of us mention of the problem solving in a different way. And we're looking at the problem solving in a very creative find The way of we do is just try to find a proven method of approaching a problem or challenging imaginative and initiative ways. The process is that we try to really define the problems and uh, opportunity that we're facing and come up with the new and innovative responses and then taking an action. And what would it be when we come to an open class? Diverse, make a difference. One way of you doing the creative, is coming yet? Not yet, is it? The diversity is a keyword for here. We need something that is a diversity, and the space and time right now is so, um, can be overcome with the, a system that we could do as a synchronously online learning and an online community. So the aim of our project is try to building an online learning community that appear to be an environment that we aim for. Two things that we're looking for is that we try to share resources and join online activities. Even though one of the thing that we perhaps we assuming we, we know that for 10 years we have been together, some of the words but we still cannot get across because of the language barrier and the pronunciation whatsoever. <laughs> Professor Munzer <laughs> talking, laughing about this. Is it because, because of the um, pronunciation or whatever the accent is not the main obstacle for what we try to achieve in an open classroom. So based on this, we try to looking for a project that we can do it in a synchronous way of uh, approaching by sharing a learning resource and joy and, and online activities. The platform, the platform of the online learning community, which is the one that we try to look looking for and select that and we define the platform of the online learning community to be a process and technology. One of the process and the technology is that ever bring growth of academic from Asia and Europe. Mostly, we targeted at the graduate students from Latvia, Spain, and Thailand, which are in our three of our three classes of our own. And basically, as you know, each of the class have their own objectives. What we do is that we try to accommodate the three projects from the three countries from the two continents for the authentic instructional problem solving. That is the main target that we're looking for this research. Ines and me and Rita, we're looking at the method of design best design based research, which is so called in somehow a design experiment. We use the collaborative inquiry, which is a method that we're working together to identify the common challenge, a relevant data, and turn our instructional approach. Is it a way of uh, ongoing design? And rather than we looking for some models or some theoretical framework that existing, but we try to come up with a little agile will and our own experience in sharing and come up with the, the design and improving the design, the process of design and practice could turn out to be something that is really original and uh, turn out in a way of contribution to the creative problem solving in an open class. Three of us, yes, three of us. We have the collaboration modes. Mostly it's an asynchronous through mail, Skype, and mostly it's successfully done through the Google Doc and sharing. What has been done, it seems like we structured so well and we have the time frame for last year. Time flies, 
We plan to have the class starting on February 28th, and we could not run against the fluctuation of tasks and the challenge in the, in the university that we encounter with. So, so far we have to delay and postpone the first experiment, no, the first class. Probably it could go on the March 2019, the first class could be run. Meanwhile, during this time and until February, we should redo the, the assessment of creative problem solving. And basically, we come up with the design that we will take turn for the lectures for three countries uh, in Latvia, Bangkok, and Spain, which could be in their asynchronous mode to, um, to overcome the time and overcome the language barrier, then the student and our instructors, ourselves, can have time to reflect and make understanding of the, some resources that might be useful for the three classes. That is something at the end. <laughs> yeah, so the plan is coming to March on 2019. And basically, it's the qualitative research where we will just um, uh, make an observation and self-reflection on both of their instructional design and all the reaction the student made on the archive within the online platform that we uh, finally, finally perhaps we have to do um, setting up of our own. First, we think that we should use, as Professor Munzer said, what happened because a regular, in every day, students use different platform on, from what we have. And what we should do, should we just impose them to come to the class, or should we, we integrate the platform that they use in their everyday life? That is something that we are still talking about it. That's it, the end. Thank you. <laughs> so I open for the question or reaction to this, and perhaps Rita also will just give the answer to this. Yes, please. And maybe, maybe you can share with us what are the challenges you are trying to overcome in the first place. We are still not quite sure yet what are the challenges you are trying to overcome. And uh, perhaps <coughs> if you ask me if this kind of problem, maybe a regular face-to-face -face meeting also essential, apart from the normal thing. Right? You also need to have a face-to-face -face meeting. But and also, how long will it take to over, to to overcome these challenges? A year, within a year, within two years. So there must be a timeline, eh? clear timeline. And uh, it's too open-ended. So we don't know when will the project be over. And uh, perhaps we might be interested to take part in some of those challenges that you might list out. Lah. So some of the challenges you already have, but maybe some new one will come along the way as you discuss and uh, progress, uh, the project progress. Thank you. Thank you very much for the suggestion and the comments that are quite straight on to the problems that, that we try to overcome. As the time that we try to have the meeting since the last year for the network to, to meet each other on October or on August, or I don't remember, that is probably earlier than that, we expect to hear. But, but that is not the next skill for us. The point is that the first obstacle that we have to do is that our own researcher, three of us, for the time synchron synchronization of what we try to solid the line. I've seen Nora have seen the very well structure of one, two, three, four, five step, and I will go back and put the timeline very straightforward on that and keep timeline exactly on that month by month and no week by week, that will be overcome better. As I said, from here and from, from here until from the future, when the very future, we expect a very, very upcoming of March 2019 for the year coming, which you mean another three months for the class to begin. So the idea is that we let the class begin as our groundwork of the instructional design for creative creative problem solving from the three country. And from there, we make our observation and turn out to be a qualitative types of the data and uh, the reflection of from the three continents. 
that will be the done the, something that we have to be done and two things that will keep in in mind is that the time and the structure the step and the process to achieve with end with end hopefully by the end of august or probably later could be <laughs> yes could be come up with the report from both sides from the instruction from the instructor side the reflection of our own and the student from three sites. Thank you. More comments? Yes. Okay. Uh, this uh, this is not directly related to, to your presentation. Rather, uh, that of the Pr Professor Mansour's uh, question regarding the learning spaces by uh, presentation by Lars. Uh, when he, he constructed a uh, construct to design a learning design of the, a course, in our case, the mobile devices has become a focal point. So in case of our university, in a year, we provide almost 1,000 courses around, uh, around 700 by undergraduate and three, uh, no, no, three, uh, 700 and 300 by graduate courses. The 70% mostly by uh, the mobile devices, but the 300 by the graduate courses, some of the professors resist the trend of mobility, trend of mobile devices. When you say mobile devices, the learning design is very simplified, mm. mostly based on the video. So when you go into the, when you uh, uh, introduce the PC version, you can make it more complex. So uh, in our case, that is a big discussion topic in our industry, when we design uh, courses. So in, in your case, that's all mainly on PC level. So it's not a big uh, problem. But if you have any idea or suggestion for this kind of question, uh, I'd like to know and share the experience and ideas. Mm. Thank you. I, and I would like to add more of the obstacle that we have been encountered with is not only the language barrier, we will consider that we could not just do it a synchronous lecture in the real time because it might be a difficulty in ca capturing the content. So we try to do some type of the video archive for each of us. And one more, not only the language, the time frame for the two continents and three country, and also the devices in Latvia. Most of the students don't use their mobile. Rarely the students use it if we embed it into it. So mostly we will try to cling upon the, the um, PC version. For the instructor themselves, between three of us, I use my mobile talking with INES time to time, but not Rita. So I guess the infrastructure also is one of the obstacles to going through first from the instructor, and then it's just like the bottleneck. If the instructors could not move on, the student could not achieve and open the class. But I like to hear more of your, but mainly I would just do the time frame very strictly and go on with that. And I would still would like to hear from more. Thank you, Professor Kim. for your lectures and so on, right? Perhaps you should use the one time and tested, uh, what we call application like uh, YouTube. You can lecture on YouTube five minutes, 10 minutes, put it up there and let them watch. So maybe you don't have to invest time and money in to have your own uh, application. Huh? YouTube is one of the thing, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, well, this, this are all regularly used and throughout the world. So we make it, make it work for us. Thank you.
very interesting uh, research. Uh, maybe uh, a suggestion. Uh, before deciding on the platform or anything uh, for the uh, need analysis. Maybe you can see the uh, studies on the characteristics of the new generation students. There are many in the literature. Uh, characteristics, some of it they want to, to, to have personalized learning environment, they want to be mobile, they want to be uh, self-directed, and uh, they also going, they want the, about, can also add the element of connectivity. They want to be connected all the time. So uh, now they are connected not from their own university, but from all over the world. So maybe with that literature review, the inputs from uh, Prof. Uh, Mansoor, from Prof. Uh, Bowen can also be uh, be uh, be used be uh, uh, with the literature review. So it will be uh, stronger, more scholarly. Thank you. Very much. It's very useful. And I definitely will use the um, article and publication that you have contributed so far in such a great idea of actually Ines mentioned about that also that we have to do the need analysis beforehand. Then we can so also as a result from the three countries might not need the same way of infrastructure at all. We used to think of the social media or somewhere that we don't have to invest on that. Somehow we still need to establish some type of the platform to be the main platform and connected to types several types of the social media that we don't have to invest on. So two, three points that we, I think the team will try to or improve is that the time frame. Secondly, is the perhaps getting back to the need assessment call for the collective inquiry. Not only the data can be put into the instructional design, it can be in the output of the research also. And third is the um, platform. We try to simplify with that and try to integrate it in a way that students use in everyday life. And we try to make the open class to be happen. Matt Riddle, 2014. Uh, he leads the Australian Digital uh, Education Research Centre, so you might want to quote his work. Thank you so much. Thank you. I haven't heard any deep yet. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you were timing were fine. Okay, um, thank you to all the presenters. Um, and I think it was really uh, um, inspiring also to meet and share um, your projects or our projects uh, in the middle of, uh, of the processes because I think in, an important part of, of, uh, of our gatherings are exactly to share our both new ideas, but also problems, and and to use each other to get uh, uh, productive feedback for the further uh, work. So, thank you very much for sharing your interim uh, results and projects, and also for uh, all of you to uh, give um, a good and constructive uh, feedback. Um, we have uh, this uh, until 12 o'clock uh, to uh, have a broader discussion of our collaborative uh, project here on 21st century skills. And um, as we just experienced, um, the, the projects um, address different areas and I, I uh, a, a, a brief sum up uh, show that um, we have uh, a, a research project addressing um, uh, assessment issues. We have a research project addressing uh, different learning methods. 
uh, both uh, creative inquiry, problem solving, gamifying uh, uh, processes. We have um, studies who actually uh, inquire what uh, what the the, the demographic of uh, of uh, the and, and academic factors of for students to actually enroll in these uh, open distant learning institutions, as well as dealing with uh, technology uh, in in a, a, a future sense of uh, uh, learning and analytics and how we actually deal with these uh, new ways of of assessing. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, the overall interest in uh, what are we actually dealing with here? What What is the purpose of all our efforts? Uh, how do we actually meet 21st century skills? Uh, and um, as uh, outlined also in, in uh, one of the presentations, there are these overall questions about uh, problem solving, um, creativity and um, uh, help me on the third one sorry critical thinking sorry and uh, it's the jet lag um, you can use this as an excuse for everything um, <laughs> um, and and uh, and of course it's interesting for this group how we actually want to set our direction for our collaborative projects in a way that we end up with a sort of, um, of a mutual or common uh, approach to, to, uh, to address some of these issues. How are we actually going to address it? And I think one of the new developments in this uh, network group uh, is that we uh, both are addressing uh, uh, research uh, topics, but we actually do it now also across our countries. Uh, in many of the projects, and that of course uh, creates new inspiration, but also uh, some difficulties. For instance, we are talking about uh, what what sort of technologies are actually used, um, and uh, and some of it has to do with uh, what is accessible. Uh, and it just came to my mind the project one of my master uh, student group did in uh, at Aalborg University. They were creating a sort of a collaborative projects between uh, students in uh, in a university teacher university college in Denmark and a teacher university college in in Ghana. And it turned out that uh, they have access to uh, mobile platforms. But they didn't have the, um, the digital um, infrastructure to actually uh, to actually access uh, many of the platforms that the Danish students normally access. So they actually ended up by using uh, the students who uh, my students who should create a sort of solution en ended up by suggesting a design using uh, Facebook because every every student had access to this uh, platform. So, so I think when we are doing these collaborative across country uh, uh, projects, we have uh, we we also have to explore what is very interesting, but it not it does not make life easier. But what, how do we actually access uh, technologies, and what are the the opportunity and the possibilities in the different uh, countries? So I think it's not to uh, to choose an either or in with regard to to uh, technologies, but what is actually suitable. Um, and coming from this uh, Olbo, um background, we are working with, uh, with problem-based learning as an overall approach to, to, uh, to, uh, to our uh, educational program. And that, of course, means that, um, that we are, have a, 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 an approach to, um, to uh, learning resources uh, defined by how are they useful in 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 the uh, in the context of uh, solving the particular problem or inquire a, a particular problem, but when we are collaborating with uh, colleagues from India, um, they do not have an overall approach called problem-based learning to their way of doing education. So. 
it sort of highlights our differences when we are doing these collaborative projects. But I also think it's at the same time it uh, illuminates or expose uh, what all these um, 21st century skills is about because we are required at the same time to collaborate across countries in a, in a global uh, um, um, meaning. So, um, so just uh, given that little talk uh, now, I think that, um, that uh, what we have seen here today actually gives a very good picture of how, uh, how, um, how we can uh, learn from each other's experiences in the different uh, uh, institutions we are working in, but also it shows what actually, what, what concrete problems we are struggling with. It's not uh, that education is an easy thing, so, so of course there are different challenges in our different uh, countries. So what um, I would like to invite you to uh, contribute to now is of course that um, how it would the next step be uh, in, uh, in finishing this uh, collaborative project? Because I think actually uh, that, that all the, uh, the topics discussed are addressing the overall theme of 21st century skills, but also in different uh, uh, ways, of course. Um, so, so, um, so what would be interesting now is to, uh, to have a discussion about how we can uh, how we can um, uh, um, combine these uh, different projects into uh, an overall contribution into to, uh, to working with 21st century skills. So um, I would kindly ask you now to, uh, to um, join in with some views on how we can do it and of course also a sort of timeline for how do we finish it because there's a lot of logistics between countries when are we able to do things and what when are we busy so it's not unusual that things are not uh, evolving in the same way uh, so do you have any uh, suggestions of how to uh, continue and finish from from this this point that we are at uh, at this moment or should we, should we simply set a date and say we have to be finished the next October or we have to, uh, to have some um, new interim uh, discussions or, or what are your views on that? Yes, you, you can... Mm. We are cleaning our data right now, mm -hmm. and we expect uh, we expect the research uh, to be completed sometime in the third quarter of next year, mm -hmm. and uh, by the end of the 2019, maybe we can uh, publish the thing. But maybe before we publish, maybe we can share the result mm -hmm. with the, all the other researchers and get their input, and perhaps in our mm -hmm. we, we need a bit more time to enhance and improve our collaboration. But the timeline is. Uh, End of next year, we plan to publish, mm. if possible. Mm. Um, what about my other colleague? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. For our research, uh, we plan by next year. Everything will be done. Uh, I take a few more months uh, to get the framework. And uh, at the same time, we can also have other data that we have now can be published for the preliminary studies, mm -hmm. and it will be gradual. And I plan maybe we can have uh, everybody can do, uh, can contribute like a, uh, other than uh, uh, publish uh, indiv individually in a high impact journal. Mm -hmm. We can also from the presentation just now. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest that we come up with a, bo a book, mm -hmm. so everybody will be uh, don't uh, will be contributing chapters mm -hmm. in books. Mm -hmm. I think with our literature review uh, and the data that we have mm -hmm. now, uh, we can go towards that. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. I love to see the book every every year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the books come from our research and uh, from our network. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It does, actually it doesn't happen because my friends from other network are a bit jealous <laughs> with ours because our publication is uh, very fast and very prompt mm -hmm. and very regular. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a, a chapter in uh, chapters in book will be a suggestion. Yes. Thank what, you. What, what time? What time will you finish it? Maybe the end in of 19 or in the in the middle. Or uh, yeah, less than middle. Maybe in uh, in uh, March or April will be done. March, March? I guess. Okay. March okay. because uh, I'm going to go for the second round, mm -hmm. and we after get the proposed uh, framework, I will run on the SAM uh, model to 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 uh, to uh, make sure you know uh, on the framework to endorse, uh, get the, mm, yeah, about the framework, mm. then after that it can be published. Maybe March or April, it will be done. Okay. Oh. Well, the microphone is... Well, I hope very much that KPDO becomes more responsive uh, after this meeting. <laughs> uh, but if not, I just talk to my colleague sitting next to me from Malaysia. So. Uh, it, it wouldn't take too long. Uh, she will be involved, and we will try to see how your assessment can be. But it, it, I was really inspired uh, because I'm working on uh, e-assessment and uh, authentic students' authentication and pla plagiarism for the last three years. And now talking in term about uh, the skills of 21st century, I was wondering, and maybe this can be an idea for our next research, how do we use e-assessment for assessment of 21st century skills mm -hmm. and how phenomena like authentication, cheating and plagiarism change where we move from um, a more creative type of artifacts that students are supposed to put more creative assignments, etc. So this can be another thing, just to have this classification of uh, research methods and see how e-assessment can be applied, first of all, and how it modifies the way of students' behavior uh, academic in terms of academic integrity. So this can be another idea. But I hope... Uh, yeah, or mm. to be able to do something good next year for publication. Mm. Yeah, I really much agree with you that that the assessment forms the way the students behave. <laughs> so we actually produce our students' behavior through their the, our assessment uh, tools. Mm. Mm. The students themselves. Mm. Um, um, uh, say that if the assignments are more creative, mm -hmm. targeting more creative skills, mm -hmm. the more creative are the assignments, mm -hmm. the less misbeha academic behavior they mm -hmm. apply. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, it relates to the design of, pedagogical design of the course, motivation of study. So it uh, has nothing to do with technology itself. Mm -hmm. It's about their motivation mm -hmm. and the tasks, the assignments. So this is interesting thing to research. Mm -hmm. More comments on the content of this? No? Since, since there are no comment, uh, let me give you some, some comment. As far as the assessment, uh, we are very mindful of the fact that we have technology and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. But we have also to remember that we are also guided by the qualification agency. Sometimes the technology, everything is available, right? It's all can be done. Mm -hmm. But the qualification agency, uh, staffed by people from the old era, mm -hmm. they still insist on having a face-to-face -face meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, defeat the whole thing. But maybe over time we can convince them to accept this technology, right? Uh, at the moment, we are making use of four-inch, what we call uh, our embassy, where we have the face-to-face -face meeting there. Because uh, the qualification agency will say, we don't recognize your certificate, you don't recognize your bachelor degree, whatever, unless you have a face-to-face mm. -face meeting for the assessment. Mm. So because of that requirement, all the technology that's available, we cannot use it. Even if you use it, you still have to have to have face-to-face mm. -face meeting. Mm. 
But perhaps the other area that we can share is we make use of uh, what we call random assessment. Mm. Uh, so whereby every user will see different things, uh, different answers, different questions, but come from the same set. Mm. Uh, so perhaps that way the idea of cheating, whatever it is, it will be very difficult. Mm. Uh, mm. And also in Malaysia, for instance, you have a place where the internet is very good, you have another place where the internet is not available. Mm. So how do you how do you solve this? Mm. Uh, only a, a company that is good in technology can do all this. Mm. Right? So we are burdened by technology, we are burdened by the agency, qualification agency, so many other things. And we have to find our ways slowly. Mm. But I think that research paved the way to the future. Mm. Because in future we cannot expect everybody to have face to face. Only the final exam face to face or whatever. Mm. Yeah? So those are my input. But it's actually very interesting you, what you're saying there because I also come to think about what types of face-to-face um, -face exams you got because in in Olborg a typical exam would be that you are ex examined in your uh, project which you have been working on for a, a couple of months and then your exam is to sit together with your external examinator and your teacher who transforms into an examiner and then uh, then uh, the exam is to discuss a project so so the students know everything in advance of what they actually are being examined in or uh, and and that would be a typical way of doing examination in uh, in uh, in Olborg while uh, in other institutions it could look different that you are take you're answering a question or you're doing something so so i'm curious about what would a typical examination be in in your country we have this uh what we call continuous assessment where the mm. student uses the computers and so on to do that but mm. we also have final exam before mm. the final exam mm. the guy who is invigilating the exam he doesn't need to know anything and it's a written exam and uh, normally they give uh, an essay question, you have to answer the essay, okay. or maybe an M multiple choice question, you have to answer. But basically, mm -hmm. if we require the person in charge of the exam to be knowledgeable or whatever, right, then mm -hmm. uh, if it, I always tell all my staff that whatever we do, right, mm -hmm. we must make sure, we must remember that we are an ODL institution. Mm -hmm. It costs a lot of money to fly people mm -hmm. and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. so we, we we do that, but mm. like you said correctly, right? Is the behavior of the student depend on the assessment? Mm. Uh, the assessment is very mm. important factor, mm. important element mm. in the thing, right? But mm. all our exam are uh, written exam. Mm. It is similar to the public mm. universities exam, mm. either MCQ or ACA based. Mm. Uh, and the 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 the, 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 the chief regulator doesn't need to know mm. about the detail. And uh, normally the exam, uh, forty different location. So even if there's an error, there must be a standard procedure mm. handling the error. Mm. If you made a mistake, don't announce anything. Mm. That kind of thing. No, because, uh, because to contact 30, 40 people is not that easy. Mm. Simultaneously. Mm. And that mean to, meaning to say that the quality of the exam question might be good to begin with. Mm. What, what about in the Japan system? Would you be able to go, uh, Professor Yamoda? Would, I'm not sure. If I'm, I'm just I'm just curious. We're discussing um, uh, exams right now, and you dis, uh, presented this digitalized uh, batching of uh, the future of students. So, so I was just curious: would it be possible for um, um, a Japanese student to go through the system without a face-to-face -face exam, for instance? Can you be uh, assessed uh, totally digitally in Japan? No face face to face, but without meeting, could you be uh, could you could you do your exams as a student in Japan without going to a face to face exam, totally uh, digitally? Our in our university's case, mm? Mm, <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, uh, yes. So um, so so. So I will uh, talk on my university case, mm. Mm. Uh, but yes, uh, so uh, as an online university, mm. 
Uh, so we tr uh, tried to introduce so um, uh, so full online testing assessment, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, the mm -hmm. first speaker mentioned so, mm -hmm. uh, so identification is a very big issue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. may, so we we so we also uh, have to combine face to face mode and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, computer-based uh, testing system. Mm, okay. So, human check the identification, mm. but an um, assessment so procedure mm. controlled by uh, mm. so mm. e assessment systems. Okay. Yes. So, um, so so in Japan, uh, in this area, very behind maybe your country. So, still face to face. Mm mode with the mm. main. Mm. So we are not totally digitized you know, yet <laughs> in, in, in the world. Um, the production of the, the, so the, the test about the, the management of mm. the test items mm. so uh, mm. we can utilize ICT, mm. but a full automa automized okay. uh, so testing mm. a little bit mm. early in our country. Okay. Interesting. Well, it seems that, that it could be a topic to actually take up for a, a next project to uh, work with assessment. Uh, and of course, uh, we can um, think about that to, to the next time that we hopefully meet. Um, I think uh, to, uh, to wrap up on this session now, maybe a suggestion could be that, um, that we are um, planning all of us to end our um, research by the end of uh, of uh, 2019 and um, and uh, and I think uh, there has been suggestions about uh, publication possibilities um, we have a history now of both uh, trying uh, to um, to publish uh, a book as we do uh, almost every year but also we tried the other uh, publication possibility that we could uh, uh, try to uh, to make contributions to uh, to some uh, uh, high-ranked journals that we uh, have uh, been working with for the past three years, and I I don't see that uh, one way of doing is is excluding the other. So maybe we could uh, decide to make a, a, a book publication about the project, but also try to to um, enhance uh, and inspire each other to, to make some uh, contributions to, uh, to some of the uh, well-established uh, international journals. So that would be my suggestion that we can uh, do uh, both. Um, uh, so, so I think I'm not really sure, uh, Bowen, how, f how far we can do the conclusion now, because I also think it has to do with how uh, a discussion after lunch about the futures of the network, uh, how, how that would uh, proceed. Uh, but I want to thank uh, all of you for, uh, for sharing your uh, projects here in, in, the, in the progress, and I think it's very inspiring to share actually um, insights to each other's um, struggles and, and challenges because that is how research is. It's not always easy to come up with, with a good research. Uh, so, um, so thank you for that. Um, so I, that would be, uh, I think, a uh, um, closer and, uh, of, of this session of, um, of uh, our mini seminar on uh, 21st century skills. And then I have uh, promised to some practice in practical information about lunch. Yeah. Mm. One one thirty, mm. chaired by Professor Wan Kim. One thirty. Mm. One thirty, mm. and uh, another announcement is that because the room uh, will be rearranged to the uh, to to be more appropriate for discussion, so could you please? Um, <laughs>